Hey, good morning, Calvary. It's Pastor Chad here with your word for the day. And uh, hey, by the way, Christmas Eve's just a few days away, and I hope you're going to join us uh, on the 24th. We've got lots of options for uh, services. We're going to have uh, a traditional Christmas service at the McCulloch campus at 2 o'clock. We're going to have modern Chris, uh, Christmas services at our Sweetwater campus at 2, 3.30, 5 and 6 30 and we're going to have a uh, christmas service christmas eve service down in parker at four o'clock at their campus so we've got uh six christmas eve services for you to join us live or online now our online uh services will be streamed at 2 3 30 5 and 6 30 they'll be our modern services just want you to be aware of that and i want to remind you our christmas schedule is we're not going to have on-site services for the 26th, 27th. We're going to live stream the 26th, 27th, so they're going to be available at the usual times, 5 o'clock on Saturday, 8, 9, 30, and 11 on Sunday, but, uh, but no on-site. So please don't come to the, the campuses uh, in Havasu on uh, that weekend after Christmas, just uh, so you know that. We wanted you to be aware of that and be able to participate with us, join with us online for those services. And again, on Christmas Eve, whether it's online or in person, we'd love for you to join us in celebrating the birth of our Savior. Now, we're celebrating the birth of our Savior on Christmas, uh, but uh, today I get to talk to you about the crucifixion. Mark chapter 15, verse 21, and it says, And they compelled a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry Jesus' cross. And they brought him to the place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. And they offered Jesus wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his garments among them, casting lots for them to decide what each should take. And it was the third hour when they crucified him. And the inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two robbers, one on his right and one on his left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, Ha, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes mocked him to one another, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. And those who were crucified with him also reviled him. This is the key event in Christianity. It's Jesus on the cross. And, and it's the key event in Christianity because it was on the cross that Jesus paid for our sin. You see, when we sinned against God, we accrued a debt that we were unable to pay, and it was Jesus who paid our debt. In the Gospel of John, chapter 1, John the Baptist sees Jesus walking, and he says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. In 1 Peter, chapter 1, the Apostle Peter writes, For you know it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you by your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. You see, we were purchased from hell by the blood of Jesus. He paid our debt so that in Christ we could be redeemed. Uh, the Apostle Paul put it this way in 2 Corinthians 5, God made him who knew no sin, Jesus, to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The cross is a beautiful, beautiful reminder of God's grace and our salvation because without the cross we have neither. And so when you see a cross, remember that God loves you. And he demonstrated that love in this while we were sinners. Christ died for us. And it's a reminder of God's grace that without the sacrifice of Jesus, our sins would not be forgiven and we could not have eternal life and we could not go to heaven when we die. So I want you to know the cross. Now, one other thought, just as you're looking at this passage, because it jumped out at me as I read it again for about the thousandth time, 
And that's Simon of Cyrene. I want to be like Simon of Cyrene. Uh, I don't know if you noticed this or not, but, but Simon of Cyrene is forced to carry the cross of Jesus. The Roman soldiers compelled him, uh, because he was part of the Roman Empire, to just stop what he was doing on his way to Jerusalem to, to worship God and carry the cross of a criminal, a bloody cross, a dirty cross, and he had to carry it out to the, the edge of the city. So he was going the opposite direction he was supposed to be going. He got dirty. He got hot. Uh, he's walking through the midst of taunting crowds. This was a tragedy that he got dragged into. And yet it changed his life. See, tradition tells us that Simon of Cyrene became a follower of Jesus. How could he not? How could he not? But he became a follower of Jesus. And it mentions he, Alexander and Rufus, his sons, who became part of the church, became leaders in the early church. You see, you just never know how God is going to interrupt your plans. None of us do. I mean, this is crazy Christmas season like no other we've ever been through. And you just never know how God is going to interrupt your plans. But sometimes by God interrupting our plans, he redeems our life. Sometimes by God interrupting our plans, he has better plans for us. And, and I just want to challenge you to see that in the midst of a year that has been full of interruptions. A year that's been full of disappointments, a year that's been full of tragedies and, and frustrations and all these kinds of things. I want you to see, I want you to look at those interruptions differently. Because today I want you to remember the love of God for you that is displayed on a cross. And today I want you to rejoice if God chooses to interrupt your plans to fulfill his purposes. See, the thing is, we don't always know what his purposes are when he interrupts our plans. So it is a statement of faith for us to look for those interruptions and when they come, to say thank you, God, for what you're going to do that I can't see. So again, I hope you know that God loves you because of the cross. And I hope you rejoice the next time your life gets interrupted because God's at work. Have a great day and God bless. We'll see you Christmas Eve.